Greetings, citizens of the internet. I'm Static Buzz, and this is going to be my Let's Guide for how magic and ninjutsu and kind of how weapons work in Neo 2. So let's get started. The first thing to understand is that Neo 2 works off of a proficiency system. So as you use a weapon or a magic or a ninjutsu move, you gain proficiency in that skill. So as you use Onyo Magic, you gain proficiency in Onyo Magic. And once you level up in that skill, you get a point to spend in its tree to unlock more abilities. How you get to the screen that shows the proficiencies is you go to your character status screen and then you hit the right button to go over one and it'll show you your proficiency and where you're currently at level wise and experience bar wise to get to the next level. So that's the basic of skills and how they work and weapons are pretty straightforward if you use a weapon then you get proficiency in it and you can do that from the beginning unfortunately ninjutsu and onyo magic are not that way you have to get either a shuriken or a bomb for ninjutsus or you have to get a weapon enhancement ability like lightning or fire or a um, or the ability to throw the fireball or throw the lightning ball and how you do that is this there are two options or ways of getting ninjutsu skills and onyo magic skills the I guess the one that will just come along as you're playing that you don't really have to work to try to get is if the locks of hair drop that give you skills for either one of those that is the most straightforward way you get them you use the the locks of hair and it gives you a skill point to use in that skill tree the other way is you use the Kodama to unlock those abilities by using the Kodama Bazaar and the Kodama, Kodama Bazaar as far as I can tell what shows up in there as you get Kodama are, is random So what do I mean by random? I started a total of six different characters. And three of them I did the same exact thing on each one. Selected the same weapons, the same two weapons in the same order. Came into the game, went and got my DLC armor, put all of that on. Then I went and I donated all of the extra armor, the, the, the starter armor, to the Kodama which unlocks the bazaar and then I went around and got the first Kodama and I'll show you that in a little bit what I want you to know is that on each of these characters all six of them and even including the three that I did the same exact thing on each time when I unlocked the first Kodama I got a different thing that I could buy in the bazaar each time one time was a shuriken, one time was a travel talisman, and another time was a, a bomb. So that is what that is. It's random. If you want to start off with ninjutsus or magic, what you have to do is you have to start a character, get the first Kodama, go check the shrine and see what came up if you get something that you can use to build those skills up then you can go ahead and use those alright so let's get to how I unlocked the bazaar and how I got this the skills that I needed for ninjutsu and onyo magic so you're gonna load into the game you're gonna go to the first area you can go to you're gonna go to the shrine you're going to grab your DLC stuff, you're going to level up, whatever you want to do there. And if you have extra items, like if you get the DLC, you will have extra items because you're going to equip all this 
and take off the starter stuff. If you don't have the DLC for pre-order, don't worry about it. You're just going to have to go around and collect some items so that you can donate to the Kodama. So you want to go back to the shrine, you're going to want to go over to make an offering, and you're going to want to offer up some items you're not going to use. What this is going to do is going to give you Divine Rice. Divine Rice is the currency for the Kodama Bazaar. You only have to offer up one item to open up the bazaar. You're going to need more rice than that if you want to use this technique to unlock ninjutsu or onyo magic because it's going to take a couple of items to get you to the next skill so that you can actually use skills instead of buying items. Alright, so once you've done that, you're going to want to follow this path to get to the first Kodami. You're going to want to come up here, go left, fight the goblin looking guy down here, get past him, and there's going to be the Taurus guy. Unless you're feeling really brave, at level 1 I would not fight the Taurus guy. I would do what I do here, and what I do is I veer off to the right when he passed left, I grab the item, once he comes back to where I'm going, where I'm at, and I, I circle back around to the other side and grab the other item, and there's actually two items over there, but if you stay against the wall like I do, you should be pretty safe. So veer around, get the item here. Stay against the wall, there'll be another item right up ahead. And at this point, stay to the wall on the left, and you'll end up coming up a path. Now you're going to want to veer right, and that's where the Kodama is going to be at. Now to get back to the shrine, you're going to have one more goblin character to kill. And then you're going to have to open the door, and the shrine, the starting shrine will be right there. So... Like I said, kill the goblin character here. I'm not pulsing so great. So the reason why I didn't pick up that item is because I wanted to do everything on the three characters the same exact way to see if I got any different items inside the Kodama Bazaar. And that's how I did it the first time, so I did not want to do it again. So I wanted to do the same thing on each time that I start a new character. So this is the third character I start, and as you can see, I get the, the bomb for Ninjutsu. And I would recommend if you're trying to do ninjutsu that this is the best method to start off and get the ninjutsu skill to level 2 so that you can start actually using skills instead of items. Because if you get the shurikens, it takes about 24, 25 shurikens to get to level 2. It takes 4 bombs to get to uh, level 2 for ninjutsu. So I didn't have enough divine rice to buy the bombs that I wanted, so I was looking for things to offer to get some more divine rice. And then I go in and then I buy the the bombs. Eventually. Remember to go in and equip your bombs so that you can throw them. And a uh, correction on that, I think it takes 8 bombs, but it's still a lot less than the 24-25 shurikens that you have to use to get uh, efficiency up. You just want to make sure that you're hitting something on every bomb. If you're not hitting something on every bomb, I don't know if you get the proficiency for it. So there you can see that uh, the four bombs I threw got me about halfway through. So I gathered up some more items. I went back to the shrine to buy four more bombs. 
we're gonna get those and throw those at the first goblin that we come across got to get some more divine rice but we should be good go so once you've equipped them then once you buy some more it automatically shows back up you don't have to go do it again just an FYI and there we go we got our one point in ninjutsu so now we're gonna go to the ninjutsu tree and we're gonna select bombs again I like I said shurikens don't seem to build up proficiency as well as bombs do so I I'm looking at what's available but I end up going with bombs because if I want to build proficiency up that seems to be the most efficient way come on Alright, so what you have to do after you select this is you have to go back to the shrine. And this will unlock another tab in the shrine called Ready Jutsu. You can see here it's giving me the prompt for it. So you go over to Ready Jutsu. And. Come on, I can find it. There we go. Oh, I'm going back to the bazaar. Now that there we go. Ready Jutsu. Come on, you can do this. And my capacity is based off of how much I've put into dexterity and whatnot to increase my ninjutsu capacity. When you up the dexterity, and there's a couple other skills you can up, and it'll tell you plus one in ninjutsu capacity. And that's what it's talking about. So you can have so much capacity and that'll be tied into all your ninjutsu abilities so I could have like three in bombs and three in shuriken or whatever if I had a six capacity and that's pretty much how ninjutsus work it's uh, pretty straightforward once you use them you go back to the shrine and they're back again. You don't have to fret too much. They're, every time you go to the shrine, it's like when you replenish your health and everything, you replenish your equipped ninjutsus and onyo magic. Onyo magic works the same as ninjutsus. You have to get an, uh, an item to unlock the skills. This time around, I got the magic... Um, weapon enhancement talismans unlocked in the Kadama Bazaar and I use that on my weapon to build up my proficiency for Onyo magic and then afterwards I get Onyo skills and I use those instead of the items so it's the same process just uh, a little bit different let me show you the, um, how that kind of worked out so same as the bombs, make sure you equip them into a quick use slot. You're going to want to have them readily available for use. And what I do, what I did was I buffed my weapon and then I took this guy out. And then I ran to the next one before... It ran out hopefully to get two. I didn't know how long it was going to last. And I did that this pretty much until my proficiency got me to level two. You can see I can barely get two before it uh, fades away. So not the, <laughs> the longest lasting buff, but it works. And you can see that uh, 
the proficiency did not go up that much from using it. Alright, let's fast forward a little bit here. So I grabbed a couple more talismans after I used the ones that I bought before and then on this run I wanted to use the tonfas to see if by hitting them more if the proficiency built up faster. But it didn't seem, at least from what I could tell, that it made a difference. And the only reason I stuck with the tonfa deck that is because I thought it looked cool with uh, me having fire on the tonfas and using bla blazing fast skills to take these guys out and you can see it fades the same amount of time as yeah I didn't want to go over there because that guy has a habit of eating the other guy and getting really big and becoming real difficult Seemed to work out this time though, because he did need it. Yeah, these guys can either eat another one of their kind or jump on you and feed off of you and get really big, and then they become a little bit more difficult. Alright, so let's fast forward until I've gotten to uh, level 2 on the Onyo Magic skill, and then I'll show you that part. So I've got my proficiency up to level 2, which gives me one skill point in Yonyo Magic. So I'm heading back to the shrine. Before I go into the shrine, I'm going to go and pick oh, Onyo Magic down. Yep, there we go. And I'm going to pick the ability I want. And at this point, the, the only four skills you can pick are enhancing the weapon or... Yeah, they're all enhancing weapon. So once you get to level 2, then you can get an ability that you actually, like you saw there, with the fire, throw the fire. And it makes things a little easier. And just remember, your capacity is also based off of your magic. So if you build up magic, and there's a couple other skills you can build up, you will increase your Onyo magic capacity. So which you, you'll see that here in a second after I pick... I think I go with lightning. And yeah, unfortunately you have to beat a certain mission to get to the next ability that I, w I want in Onyo Magic. But I think it's only mission one. I'm not really sure because I haven't looked at it on my higher level character. But at any rate, I can now go in ready the Jutsu under Onyo Magic and have that as an ability that I can use to build up my proficiency and you can see my capacity here is two I come back and level up a little bit later my magic and that gives me one more so my capacity becomes three But that's pretty much it. That is how you can get Onyo Magic and Ninjutsu early on if you really, really want. And use them to build up your proficiency to get the skills. And then you have uh, them at your disposal for forever. So one thing to keep in mind is as you find Kodama, each one will unlock an item. That item is totally random based off of the pool of items that it can unlock for the area. So even if you don't get it on the first Kodama, if you don't feel like starting another character, you can go to the second one and see if you get the item that you want to build up that skill. So keep that in mind. All right, so that's my let's guide for Neo 2 on how Onyo Magic and Ninjutsu's work and how you can unlock them early. Hope you guys liked it. If you did, do the things, you know, like, subscribe, 
hit the comments down below let me know what I could do better what you liked and as usual until next video take care bye bye now static buzz out